Steven Rosenfeld uh, writing over at Alternet about the uh, w- the executive action that President Obama could take. You recall in the first hour I was talking about how David Vitter gets you know a million dollars from the oil industry and then says, "Hey, let's do away with those subsidies for solar in Louisiana." He's running for governor, um, governor prostitute. I think they're going to call him. You've, have you seen the the ads that that his opponent is running against him? David Vitter took a call from a prostitute rather than from his country. Well, he did, actually. But anyhow, uh, there's something that... Uh, so to, to deal with that kind of a problem, the, the, uh, you know, the Scott Walker funded by, by the Koch brothers' uh, empire uh, problem, you know, that has completely changed the political landscape in Wisconsin and, and uh, turned Wisconsin into the, the state with the, with the most rapidly vanishing middle class in the United States. Or Sam Brownback in uh, Kansas saying, well, we're going to do a Reaganomics experiment here, and I'm going to use Kansas and prove that Reaganomics works. Uh, dramatic tax cuts for the rich people. In fact, many of the taxes went down to zero. Raise taxes on working class people by raising the sales tax. And, uh, and let's do away with a bunch of welfare programs for people who can't find work. And that'll force them back into the job market. And pretty soon, uh, Kansas will be filled with prosperity. No, Kansas, Kansas is a screaming disaster right now, as is Wisconsin, as is pretty much every state. I mean, if, if, look at how popular Bobby Jindal is down in Louisiana. <laughs> it's like single digits. He wants to be president. His own state hates him because his economic policies are ruining the state. So how do we, you know, these economic policies that are being pushed by people who have been bought by billionaires, what do we do about this? Well, the billionaires are typically doing this through their corporations. And one of the big problems is, frankly, the defense industry. You know, a a little more than half of our total defense budget doesn't actually go to the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, uh, the Coast Guard. Instead, it goes to private for-profit corporations that are military contractors or defense contractors or intelligence contractors. I mean, this has become a huge gravy chain. This is exactly what Dwight Eisenhower warned us against. And pre- the president of the United States could easily issue an executive order saying that if you are a corporation that gets money from the federal government, you must disclose your lobbying and, and political support efforts. You must, you must disclose where your money's going when it comes to trying to influence our democracy, our republic. And you would think that that would be something that even Republicans would like. I mean, this is exactly what uh, Justice Scalia envisioned in Citizens United when he said, if you don't like the fact that we're letting billionaires buy politicians, and if you don't like the fact that we're letting corporations buy politicians, there's a very simple remedy. It's called transparency. Actually, it was Anthony Kennedy who said that in his uh, decision, echoing Scalia. So you would think, okay, so the conservatives like transparency, let's have transparency. But back in 2011, when President Obama brought up the possibility of signing one of these executive orders, as is usually the case, they take the, the, the draft of it and they run it by you know, people within the government. And one of them leaked it to Hans von Spes, Spes what's his name? Spesofsky, I think. I'd have to find it. But anyhow, this guy is like, you know, he's he's the main pusher of the idea that there's a massive epidemic of voter fraud in the United States. Something that Chris Kobach in Kansas spent millions of dollars looking for, and he's ended up prosecuting two couples in their 60s for voter fraud because they voted in Kansas and they voted in another state. In both cases, the voting in the other state was just for local seats. They thought you could do that. You could vote, you know, uh, hey, you know, I, I have a home in two different states. I'll vote for the local stuff in one state. I'll vote for the national stuff. You can't do that. It's illegal. But they didn't know this. And they voted in good conscience. And they're white people. And they're in their 60s. But Chris Kobach's going to throw their asses in jail because he's found two cases of voter fraud. So anyhow, old Hans uh, uh, got this thing out, and uh, and killed it. Public Citizen found this this from the uh, piece by Stephen Rosenfeld over at uh, 
alternate. Public Citizen found that 11 of the 15 biggest federal contractors did not fully disclose their donations to the kinds of political committees unleashed by Citizens United. They were defense, health, and insurance giants. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, McKesson, Humana, Hewlett Packard, General Electric, Honeywell International, Merck, and United Health Group. And then they talk about how, uh, you know, in 2011, progressive campaign reformers almost got Obama to issue the order. But the blowback from corporate lobbyists like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and its puppets in Congress was so intense that the president who sent Navy SEALs after Osama bin Laden backed down. This is pretty amazing, you know. One of the people who were pushing the White House to do this uh, wrote about it in an email. He said, Obama was about to issue the transparency executive order in 2011. Following protocol, he distributed the draft EO executive order to agency personnel for feedback before fi- formalizing the order. Somehow, Republican voter fraud propagandist Han von, Hans von Speskowski got a hold of it and released it to the congressional Republicans who immediately re- rallied to stop the executive order. They passed riders to appropriations bills led by o- Oklahoma Republican uh, Tom Cole that would prohibit Obama from requiring political spending disclosures from government contractors as a condition of applying for a federal contract. Obama never brought the issue forward. Right-wingers backed him down. So, I don't know. You know, I used to make jokes about Harry Reid. And, I mean, this was like, you know, five, six, eight years ago, ten years ago, back when Harry Reid actually was running the United States Senate, and I thought he was running it in far too gentle a fashion. And I made the joke that, you know, and this was back when when, uh, Schwarzenegger was governor of California. And I said, somebody needs to stand outside the governor's mansion on that, you know, first, first of the month when the package of testosterone arrives from Mexico and snatch it and go give Harry Reid a shot. Um, Maybe it's time for the president. I don't know. This is, see, this is what has happened as a result of Democrats giving in to Republican freakouts like this and not doing the right thing and requiring companies to disclose their political donations if they're going to take hundreds of billions of dollars, and it's literally hundreds of billions of dollars from you and me our tax dollars, and not tell which politicians they bought off in order to get that. There, there's just something fundamentally wrong with that. And uh, the American people know this. And they look at Democratic politicians, Democratic par- Big D, Democratic Party politicians, who are on the take or who are easily intimidated by Republicans. I mean, back when Bernie was talking about, uh, on this program, uh, and, he, and, and by the way, he's been so unfairly hit on this thing, you know, somebody called up and said, you know, the president wants to cut Social Security. This is when the president was proposing a grand bargain that included the change CPI. And Bernie was pretty upset about it. And he said, yeah, maybe somebody should primary him or words to that effect. He didn't say he would. And the next week when he was on our show, he said, you know, I thought about it. And that was really not such a good idea. I'm, I, you know, I withdraw that. I didn't I didn't really. It was just in the heat of the moment. But of course, the audio's out there and, you know. But anyhow, 69 seats in the House of Representatives, 13 seats in the Senate, 12 governorships, and 910 total legislative offices around the United States have been lost by Democrats to Republicans in the six and a half years of the pre- of the Obama presidency. And I would submit to you that if he had really been taking names and kicking ass, if, if, if uh, his attorney general had put a couple of dozen banksters in prison... If he had been breaking up the big banks, if he had been expanding Social Security rather than proposing cutting it, we would not have lost all these seats. If Democrats ran as Democrats rather than as light as as uh, a Republican light, I, you know, I I think it would we would have had a very different political narrative. And Bernie Sanders is bringing that courage, I believe, to the party. This is the Tom Hartman program, and high time for it. I mean, in Kentucky, you had a total voter turnout of 30%. Really? Well, they had a Republican light Democrat. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.